Hi, spermatogenesis in males involves the process of meiosis in which spermatogonia in the testes becomes spermatozoa. Spermatogonia are diploid germ cells in the testes that maintain their numbers by mitosis. This maintains spermatozoa numbers throughout life. Spermatogonia contain both X and Y sex chromosomes. At a certain point, a spermatogonium will stop its other duties and begin meiosis. The cells that result from meiosis will then pass through more stages of maturation and development and will become mature spermatozoa capable of traveling to and fertilizing an ovum. The testes is made up of very long, tightly coiled tubes called the seminiferous tubules that are surrounded by layers of connective tissue, blood vessels, and nerves. The seminiferous tubules are linked to straight tubules and a network of tubes called the retia testis, which lead to the epididymis. Now, the epididymis is another collection of tubes on the posterior edge of the testes that passes inferiorly and is continuous with the ductus deferens, also known as the vas deferens. The ductus deferens carries mature spermatozoa from the testes to the urethra. Spermatogonia are found in the walls of the seminiferous tubules and as they progress through spermatogenesis they pass toward the lumina of those tubules. Ladic cells within the testes produce testosterone. Sertoli cells are also found in the seminiferous tubules and they produce a number of hormones. The spermatogonia that begin the process of spermatogenesis are called spermatogonia A cells. Spermatogonia A cells are stem cells that proliferate and replenish the root source of all spermatozoa. The cells that are about to begin meiosis are called spermatogonia B cells. They are connected to one another by cytoplasmic bridges. This makes it easy to recognize them. They continue to divide by mitosis until they become primary spermatocytes. The cytoplasm bridges will maintain connections between a group of cells during spermatogenesis thereby synchronizing the process to ensure the production of groups of spermatozoa. The primary spermatocytes enter meiosis 1. Homologous combination of chromosomes occurs in this stage. One primary spermatocyte becomes two secondary spermatocytes. These two cells are now haploid. Each secondary spermatocyte may contain an X or a Y chromosome. Now the secondary spermatocytes enter meiosis 2 and again divide forming spermatids. DNA is not replicated in meiosis 2. Therefore, these cells have only half their original DNA. During fertilization, this DNA will be combined with the DNA of the maternal ovum. This is the end of the first stage of spermatogenesis and we call it spermatocytogenesis which basically means development of spermatid cells. During spermiogenesis the rounded spermatid cell changes shape and becomes elongated and it develops the familiar head and tail of a normal sperm. At this stage, 
the cell undergoes a few changes. So the cell loses this cytoplasm and the nucleus is packed into the head. The mitochondria become concentrated in the first part of the tail and an acrosome forms around the tip of the head. Now the acrosome contains enzymes that will help the sperm penetrate the outer layers of the ovum during fertilization. At the end of spermiogenesis, the spermatids have now matured to become spermatozoa. Generally, spermatogenesis takes around 64 days to produce spermatozoa from the germ cells in the processes we have just described. Now the spermatozoa are passed in an inactive state to the epididymis where they continue to mature. During the next six or seven days, they descend within the epididymis and become motile and ready to be passed into the ductus deferens during ejaculation. Abnormalities in spermatogenesis are common. During fertility investigations, the number and concentration of spermatozoa and the proportion of abnormal sperm are counted in a semen sample. A number of biological and environmental factors are responsible for the abnormalities of sperm count and fertility, such as smoking, sexually transmitted diseases, toxins, testicular overheating, and radiation. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. More videos coming up. See you in the next one.